So look, if, uh, if you got to get out of here, it's okay. What we're going to do now is we're just going to do a quick Q&A and then get out of here. Uh, Mondays are always, well, Mondays are Mondays. So that's what we got. Exactly. When flip-flop. So let's get into a little Q&A and go from there. Whoops. Ba -ba -ba. Hide. Okay. Ah, thank you, Rob. You're welcome, James. Damn it. Five is two was the same. Okay, perfect. Mm. Hey, when I screw up like this. Yeah, I thought they were both the same. Let me do one more just to make sure. This is the alternate if we can't get a hold. Great. Atomski.blockchain. Great. All right. So now I got to put that in. So right there, that'll be this. That'll be the six. Thanks, Vanessa. I appreciate it. Uh, Adam, I never sold and wish I had. I bought a lot of top two. That's okay. Did the same thing in 2017. And uh, here we are, 2022. The big thing is just uh, you learn from your mistakes. And next time around, uh, that's it. Yeah. Thank you, Theo. I appreciate it. Any bear market trips or purchases? Yeah, once a week I buy Bitcoin and usually it's been Coinbase. Although I did sign up for a strike account and I bought like 150 bucks, 125 bucks just to see how it all worked. But even with strike, which uses a lighting network, it works really well, but there's a limit and uh, set at $1,000. I don't know how it is in your country, or your region, I have no idea. But also you, if you wanna get more higher limits, you have to do the whole KYC. Hmm. When are we going to get our coins back from Celsius? That's anybody's guess. Nobody has any idea. I wish Celsius would be a little bit more forthcoming, but, uh, you know, they can't. Adios Waves. Ooh, from L.A. Very nice. All right, so, uh, yeah, Larry, we talked about it. I mean, I don't know. I know he's out there. I mean, legal represents him now. <laughs> what, what if Bitcoin's still smashing before all-time highs? I, I don't see any, any all-time highs coming anytime soon. Definitely not this year and probably not even next year. Rob, would you consider yourself a Bitcoin whale? No. I'm a whole coiner. I think everybody knows that. But uh, a whale, no. Yeah. Yeah. I got into sales because of you, Dan. Yeah, a lot of people did. It's true. Because I, look, when I knew about it, it looked legit rehypothecation, but there was, looks like it was a little bit of collateralization. And things were on the up and up. There wasn't these crazy DeFi putting it into uh, Anchor protocol at 20% and then getting pulled. That's why I want this to all come out. But, you know, whatever. I will say this. I mean, with Celsius, everything was cool until it wasn't. And then again, like I've always been, like I've been saying, on June 9th, 10th, 11th, when I was at Consensus, people were telling me, yeah, Celsius is going to go down. And I'm like, ah, you don't, that seems like legit. They go, no, you don't understand. So much exposure to 3AC. And I was like, hmm. And I took a look at some different articles and postings. And I was like, yeah, probably it's not looking good for them. So that's why on June 12th, I put out that video. Take it off, take it off uh, Celsius. And nine hours later, it was shut down. Sucky. Yeah, personal responsibility. I mean, look, we all lost some, right? Some people lost a lot more than others, but we're all in the hole. That's just how it is. And it'll make... You know, it is one thing that it is, we're at this point and the market cap that, we are, that we're at and we lose those things. But what if it was like 20 trillion market cap and you were, you were all millionaires, all of you, multi-multi-millionaires because of all the investments. And then you wake up one day and all the withdrawals are gone. Would that hurt more or does it hurt more now? Because you're like, well, shoot, now I don't have... I mean, if you, if you overexposed yourself and you're like, I can't afford mortgage, I can't afford uh, food. And if you went 
that crazy route. Eh, it sucks all the way around. <laughs> Thanks. No, you just, it's like the army. You just show up, you show up in the right out outfit and usually things work out. Do you, this is a good question. Do you personally communicate with Alex Mashinsky? You have the clout to, man, I haven't talked to Alex or Steve since this whole thing went down. So I've reached out. <laughs> they're not, they're not talking to me. So here's a good point. Brian, some influencers made major bank on sales for 50 bucks per cent. Here's the question though. How much, didn't you guys get something when you guys signed up? That's what was told to me. Like if you use the affiliate link, you got like X amount of dollars. Am I wrong? I, cause I could have sworn that's what it was. Yeah. Don't think Alex is allowed to talk to anyone for legal reasons. Yeah, I'll wear it up. Yeah, you get a perk. Uh, that's that's what they told me, unless I was like, and no one ever said anything like, hey, I didn't get my bonus. Everybody seemed to have got it. The real question was, when did you get out? You know, like when I heard about that stuff on, on June 10th and 11th, when I was at Consensus, I was like, I get all my shit out of here. And I did. Uh, I did that in the morning. And then in the morning, I also put the video out. I'm like, hey, and of course I can't, this is the, the, the thing about it. Like when I say I'm not an academic uh, financial advisor, I can't tell you what to do. So like in the video, I'm like, this is what's going on. These are things that I hear. I wouldn't leave it in there, you know, but I can't go to your house and take it out for you. I can't do it. But I was like, this is not looking good. And then when Voyager came up, when I did that video on June 22nd, I'm like, look, here's how much they loaned out. Here's the public records because they're a public company. And here's the collateral they, they took in. They didn't take any squat. I'm taking everything off. And that was it. Yeah. I got 50 bucks receiving some on Vegas. Yeah, everything is. The Voyager situation sucks, but you don't take risk. You can't take profit. Just about how much risk. But you know what the real question is, is, do you know how much risk you were taking? And that's what the, the big, I, I think the big conversation is. Like when you go to, I don't know, any picture, any, any casino, MGM Grand, right? You walk in there, this is a casino. I'm going to gamble. I know it's a gamble, right? But it seems like some of these companies that were out there, they weren't telling you what they were doing behind the scenes to give you that yield. You know, you heard about, well, you know, there's an arbitrage opportunity. There's a little bit of rehypothecation. Then we have, you know, these hedge, hedge fund managers, they do their magic with it and we get the yield back from the, the small percentage that we make. And it wasn't about, yeah, we're putting it into these super risky DeFi plays and getting 20% yield back and that's how we're getting all this yield. Did you know that? I didn't know that. But it'd be nice to know. Just saying. Early investors room. <laughs> no, I say that. I say don't trust anybody. Even if, even if your mom texts you for your, your Coinbase password, it's probably a scam. Uh, Rob, will BNB have a slight pump coming soon? I maybe. Binance Coin is a, is a powerhouse. You know they they is if you look at stakingrewards.com, they are staked like eighty percent. Let me show you. Check this out. And I'm going to tell you why it's so much stake, but whatever. So this is stakingrewards.com. It's a pretty great website. This is where I pulled all my, my Cardano's a ghost chain video from, or part of it. But look at this, the staking ratio. Uh, Solana is 75% still. Cardano 71%. Avalanche 58 Binance chain, 81.64%. That's crazy. That's a lot. But you have to remember it's a pretty centralized coin, so take it with a grain of salt. Yeah, so is mine. The chief forgets everything now, so. Uh, yeah, me too. And this is the reason, Squadra courses, I feel bad for the peeps had a lot on Celsius, Woodrow. Yeah, me too. That's why I'm here every day. 
because people need to hear the information and people need to vent and people need to, they just have to. So that's why I try to show up. Like it's easy just to fade away, you know, and do nothing, but you'd have to show up. And that's just how it goes in with life, with family, with finances, with work, with everything. You just got to keep showing up. Uh, G Loco. Well, what's your username? So, and I'm getting, you know what? Speaking of which. <laughs> Thanks, Michael. Uh, sweat coin. Let me see. <laughs> uh, where to go? Well, uh, no one, no one to get their hands dirty with ETH gate because everyone's of ETG gate. Sure. So this is a great Jing and Chow. First of all, does anybody here live in China? That's the first question. The second thing is, the question is, what's your opinion on security forces in China attack protesters seeking frozen funds, bank depositors demanding their money back were beaten, kicked the ground right away? <laughs> I keep hearing different stories about this. Guy from Coin Bureau tweeted this out. And he said, there was, let me show you what I'm talking about. Because if I just keep talking about it, it doesn't make any sense to you. Also, follow me on Twitter if you can. That's where I'm most active. Follow Rob Kainz, Gold Silver Pro is a good guy. Had him on the show. Uh, let's see. Coin Bureau. That's pretty funny. This is it. So this is Citizen Storms Bank of China and Zing Zhao over, I nailed it, over frozen assets. That's what it says here. And then if you look in the, let me ring this up. But if you look at some of the comments, ah, son of a gun. Let me go back then. Because in the comments, people are saying, no, 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 that's not, that's not what that is. Everything is liquid in, in the Chinese banks because of the uh, renminbi. I think that's how you say it. And they say this was actually not a bank. It was something else. And I'm like, well, I, I can't trust you. I can't trust anybody anymore because who knows if that's a bot or that's a Chinese national or somebody from, I mean, who knows? I don't know. So, uh, and people were saying a little bit different. So the question that I have is who lives in China and who can verify that? It's so hard these days to verify anything. Bank runs in check. What happens in the USA? Thunderdome. That's when uh, economy and culture and the entire country collapses on top of everything else. So, Rob, everybody else here, do you know anybody right now who's truly happy? I'm pretty happy. I mean, look, we all should have taken more profits. Am I wrong? We should have taken more profits in the bull run. We screwed up, right? I took some profits. Should have taken some more, didn't do it. Nobody's perfect. That's just how it is. And then we all got bamboozled and hoodwinked with uh, the things that were going on in these, in these different platforms. Let's just call a spade a spade. However, I take a look around and I look to myself and I'm like, this is cliche, but it is the truth. I am not underground. I am healthy. Uh, healthy people have thousands of wishes and, and a sick person only has one wish. So just remember that. And then... I have family and friends around me. I'm feeling pretty damn good, in all honesty. And today, my grandson's with us. We're going to go to another water park. Sounds like a good day. Did I miss out a lot of money? Yeah, I did. But, I mean, I've had a ton. I've had less. And uh, things just kind of move along. All right. This is why I show up to answer questions and comments like from Matt says. Never forget this guy's shilling Voyager. Well, not actively shilling uh, Voyager, but I did talk about Voyager quite a bit, did I not? I think we can all agree on that. And then did I not say that Bitcoin was going to 150K? Well, that didn't happen. And did I not say that VGX is going to 30 bucks? Well, that didn't happen either. And actually, I called that in January 7th, 2021, I want to say, when it was 29 cents. 
went up to seven dollars, did pretty good, didn't hit 30 bucks, went back down. Uh, so that prediction was wrong, just because I have no crystal ball. And the Bitcoin thing, that didn't work out at all. I mean, it only hit 69,000, which was half roughly of what I thought it was going to be. And as far as Voyager, everything was good until it wasn't. So let me ask you all a question. When you signed for Voyager, were you able to buy and sell crypto? I think you were. And the next part was, uh, were you able to gain some yield on that? I think you were. And then past that, these loans came out later. I had no idea. Look, anybody in their right mind, I can't say that. I don't know, I don't know the circumstance behind it. But if you loan out over a half a billion dollars to an enormous fund, three arrows capital, and don't take any collateral, I think that is uh, insane to think about. And of course, when I learned about that on June 22nd, I put that video out and said, this is ridiculous. Who would do this? I'm taking my money out. You can do whatever you want to do. So Matt, you are right. I did talk about Voyager quite a lot. Celsius, not so much, but I did talk about them. It's true. And everything's cool until it's not. And when it's not, I'll let you know. That this is what I know. I mean, look, even Simon Dixon, who was on James' channel, Best Answers, was like, you know, we figured this stuff out way later than what we should have. And then, of course, couldn't really say much because they were uh, a big contributor or uh, uh, part of the Celsius as, as they were getting gaining funds or whatever it was. So, yeah, Matt, you are correct. But that's just how it is. I mean, again, when I figure it out, I tell you. Neil, Neil's happy. Good deal. Bank runs in China, like in 2016. Yeah. Again, Giovanni. Hey, Rob, four years of hibernation. So right now, and what, what Giovanni's, that's a great name, Giovanni Torregosa. What he's talking about is this. And tell me where I'm wrong on this one. Ah, uh ha. -huh. So here's the four-year cycles. Have we not hit these? Because we know in the past that it always comes with the Bitcoin halving, right? Bitcoin halving comes up, and the miners can only uh, mine half of what they used to as far as uh, Bitcoin every 10 minutes. So that happened in 2012. That was the first one. Then they hit an all-time high because there was a um, more scarcity, essentially. Then after that, when it goes crazy, then it goes, it dips down, and then it goes, and it really dips down the next year, and then it just kind of chops sideways. It's called a reset. Something happened in 2016, 2017, having all-time high dip reset. And I think the same thing happened again. No, I don't think I know. There was a halving in 2020. In 2021, we hit our all-time high, which was wide 67,000, 69,000, somewhere around there. But we didn't go past that in 2022. And now we're just slowly going down after a big drop-off. And then the next year, we'll probably chop sideways for a little bit before we rebound back up again, just like we did in 2018, 19, and just like we did in 2014, 2015. Four-year cycles are still intact. Will they actually maintain? Don't know, because nothing is guaranteed. Nada. But I will remind everybody this. Uh, when it's boring and it's chopping sideways, not when it's you know, actively dropping like a stone, that's my time when I buy. Just a thing. And I was it. And for me, the second best time is when it's starting to take off, but that's kind of tricky to do. I just do, I just buy when it's boring and everybody's like beaten down. So, yeah. Nah, Cass, it doesn't take balls. It just, all the, it's just like I said, it's just like going to the, the military. You just got to show up, just take the hits and keep going. Somebody said, uh, somebody named a specific CEO and said, that guy's face is only good for a, a, a roll full of quarters and fists. I thought it was pretty funny. Uh, I don't condone violence, but that was pretty good. I have, some of them have a punch. Yeah. 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 Scott says, probably more like a two or three year crypto nation. Could be, could be, could take longer. But I, I can tell you, this year's shot, and I think next year, maybe a little rebounds and up and down, but you're not going to see all-time highs next year. I don't think so. Have I been wrong before? I just admitted it. So, yeah, it could. But so far, the four-year cycles are still intact.
Here's a good question for everybody. Is there a site I can practice trades on without actually making trades using hypothetical money and it would track my stats? Some people just say just to do that on a spreadsheet, but I know there's websites that do that. Anybody know which one it is? Put in the comments. Beardy. On the internet during his, on, as he's working. But thanks for stopping by, Beardy. What exchange are you currently using? I'm using Strike and I'm using Coinbase. But you have to remember, just because I use them doesn't mean I keep the money on them or the crypto. Take the crypto off the exchange when you buy it. Even if there's a waiting period. What's up, buddy? Yeah, want to go? Yeah. Grandson says we got to go. All right, everybody. So that's pretty much it. Uh, yeah, it's perfect. Thank you for answering. CoinGecko, they can track that stuff and so on and so forth. And also BitGit. I don't have, I don't have any links to those. Sorry, but uh, you can find them. Oh, Beardy says his day off. Well, that's good. I'm glad, Beardy. Everybody, thanks for showing up. I appreciate it. If you like today's video, thumbs up, like, all that good stuff. And that's it for today. So I know it's not the best days, but just show up. And uh, as time goes on, usually things work out. Anyhow, thanks for stopping by. I appreciate it. I'll see you on the next one. Adios.